the ego self is much misunderstood. Yeah. It's not just being bombastic or <laughs> anything like this. Yeah. The ego self is a structure, a psychological structure. It doesn't actually exist in material form. You can't find it in the brain. But it's a structure, psychological structure. If you like, create it out of agitation. It's the process of agitation. Where there is agitation, restlessness, the inability, the unwillingness to remain right here. Right here, that structure undoes itself. Whilst the structure is there, the agitation in there, it creates a tension, an inner tension. That tension is reflected in the mind's movement. It's reflected in the nervous system. Eventually, it's reflected in the body. And then it becomes who you are, part of your personality or part of your, let's say, mind-body vehicle. But that's not who you are. Yeah? It's a process, a movement that obscures who you are. Obscures the luminosity of who you are. In this moment, when you stop following that movement, because that's what it is, awareness follows that movement, and then awareness believes itself, <laughs> the I believes itself to be that, to be that craving and aversion, you know, mistaken identity. When the I remains right here, that movement, that agitation, that knot, that tension, that psycholog psychological structure undoes itself. That's what is meant by presence and openness. Presence and no openness are not destinations. Yeah? They're not things. They're not even actions. They're what reveal themselves in this undoing of this tight knot created out of craving and aversion, agitation. Presence and openness reveal themselves as a natural, I won't even call it a landscape, <laughs> but perhaps we can call it that, a natural landscape, a natural state, a natural space. in which the I, awareness, is untainted or unobscured by that agitation. That's called freedom. <laughs>